Hey, how you doing? Welcome, I'm Johnny Chadwick from Rough and Rude. Tonight my guest is the lovely Karina Hare, CEO of Rage Breed Records. Honey, how the hell are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing marvelous. You are looking marvelous. Oh, thank you. So you did have a good birthday yesterday? Oh my God, I'm so partying. <laughs> so, wait a minute, I, there's a bunch of rumors. I want to get this straight now. I, I heard a bunch of rumors from the grapevines about uh, um, this project we have going on. It's called Lake of Dreams. Lake of Dreams. What's that all about? So, Lake of Dreams is um, a concept project. And it's basically um, a an acoustic kind of gothic doom uh, project that I was writing alongside um, Mind Lapse. And I've been writing songs for it for a very long time. And um, I released the EP uh, some time ago. Um, and basically the EP is a concept EP because it's about... Uh, a soldier and a druidess that fall in love but the soldier's role is to kill witches and she's a druidess and the king doesn't allow pagans and people of magic in the lands so she has to make a decision whether or not she can be with him and vice versa but they don't know who they are initially because he sees her pretty much naked in the waterfall bathing and that's when he falls in love with her and um and basically like so he, they don't see each other in their clothes or anything so um he 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 basically bathes in the water as well and they talk and they you know get to know each other there's this lovely bond going you know um and <laughs> he, he visits her a few times you know and uh then one day she puts her clothes on and he sees the chain she puts around his neck which is a pagan sign right, and his heart right. just starts beating and he thinks oh my god you know he's he's and he his role is to kill pagans and witches he doesn't realize that she's a pagan witch or druidess so she has a massive problem because then she realizes that he's you know part of the king's hand who destroys people of her faith you know and um so they have to think about whether they want to be with each other whether he should logically just kill her, mm -hmm. whether she should allow him to meet her family because she puts her whole, you know, community in jeopardy and high risk. So she goes right. to, so she goes to a sage. So basically this relationship is on and off all the time because they're battling with these, um, you know, problems, you know, and he thinks it's easier if he just left her and the king wants to hit him to marry his daughter. So there's all these things going on. And then lastly, what happens is um, she goes to a sage and um, like a seer, if you like, and a seer gives her three cards, tarot cards and, tell, and consults a spirit. So the last song on the, uh, on the EP is called Ether. And ether is representational of the spirits that come down and, you know, give her advice on what to do. So she has three choices of what she can do. And each card represents a Lake of Dreams album. So basically it means that if Whoa. she goes for option one, <laughs> you know, this will happen. Option two, this will happen. And those will be the three albums by Lake of Dreams. And not only this, it will be a film each and it will be a book release, possibly, or a series. So we are planning a very big project with with that. Um, it's going to be a very, very ambitious project. But, you know, I'm inspired by Tolkien and, right, um, right. you know, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of, you know, really big with the fantasy films. I mean, if you remember Willow, Legend, Conan the Barbarian, you know? I used to put on the towel and mm. and have a like a wooden sword. I was coming in, okay. Oh, that's so cool. And that's the thing. I mean, it's like when I when I started this, um, you know, I I was really inspired by Opeth Damnation musically and mm -hmm. uh, bands like Anathema 
um, you know, and the very chilled kind of, you know, the gathering and typo negative and things like that. So I wanted to have something like a dark fantasy project. And I thought it was really cool because I thought it kind of touches on what we go through in this day and age of prejudices and how right. people who are in power, you know, can make choices like this that can, you know, hinder love. So there's there's quite a few different things in relation to that. Um, but one of the secrets I want to tell you live is on the third album, she ventures into hell. So basically what it is, is about her facing her fears. And um, he, she goes through a waterfall into the cave and there's this like, it's going to have all the magical stuff in it. So like there's a mirror and there's a portal that opens up. And she goes into hell. Awesome, so, really? That's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be. Really I got cool. goosebumps in my nipples and hearts. Really. I, <laughs> I, I, so she goes through this portal, and um, the music for when she's in hell is gonna be the a mind lapse album that we're gonna be releasing. That's badass. That's badass, isn't it? So you're gonna have is, brutal is it, death. Is this gonna be music? Gonna be music? Uh, just music or with lyrics? Oh, oh, it's going to have lyrics, yeah. So you're going to have like... Oh, um, it's going to be this... So it's going to be the album that my laps are doing. So it's basically... What happens is, the imagery of this is when she goes... It's going to be very brutal, very horrific. So people have to understand that this isn't going to be for the faint-hearted. When she goes into hell, right. it's right. hell, you know? So the music that we're writing is about a person that she meets when she's in hell by a tree. And there's a big tree there and she thinks it's got flowers on it, but it isn't. It's like embryos that haven't been born on the tree. That's psychedelic. So, that's psychedelic. Yeah. Like there's some really awesome. fucked up awesome. shit going on there. So, so basically, so, awesome. <laughs> so what yeah. we're going to do is we're, there's going to be loads of different souls she meets who has a story. And each soul that has a story will be a song by Mind Lapse. So we're going to be doing a song by Mind Lapse, Brutal Death Metal, Bit of Doom in there, you know, so it's going to represent each soul that's in hell and their story. And that's what, what she, Yeah, yeah. I won't tell you too much because there's a reason behind yeah. it as well. Okay, don't kid. Yeah. <laughs> but so, we're, we're, carry on, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I... I because the thing is, there's a reason why she goes into hell, and you'll find out in the third film. But that will be the finale, oh. and um, yeah. So, so we've we've got a really good plan of how we're going to fuse kind of Lake of Dreams and also Mind Lapse into this film, and um, that is right, right. And uh, have you already started right. on the project, or? Have you already started on or... Yeah, yeah. Really? Okay. So we, we've started to write. Okay, we've started to write the new album. So okay. Jimmy's been putting okay. together the first musical part when you know, like when she's when she goes towards the sage and she gets all the 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 spirits that come down and stuff like that. And it's a song called "When Angels Call." Oh. And um, it's really beautiful. So you're going to find that some of the stuff is very kind of neoclassical. There's going to be a lot of prog stuff. There's going to be a lot of acoustic doom. There's going to be a lot of, you know, there's, it's going to be really fucking cool. It's going to be like, you know, really epic. So, you know. <laughs> I can't wait. I really, I really, I can't wait. When, when is this supposed to be released? Uh, well, we're, we're working on the album now, but I think okay. it's probably going to be next year. If we, if we can get it done this year, that'd be amazing. We have all, we've, I mean, I've got all, a lot of songs written, so we're just trying to focus on how to record it, because it's just right. me and Jimmy for this project. Um, and then um, we do want to find someone who can do keys and stuff like that, so we're going to have a look into getting some keyboardists. Or, right, right. That, I, I, can, I can actually play keyboards anyway, so... But yeah, it's, it's there you go, thing. girl. Yeah, so so yeah, it's it's a really ambitious project, and I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna take a lot of work to get it done. Oh, but it I sounds think like it's, it's a big project. It sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. but I, I really I can't wait to hear it. 
Yeah, I know. I'm really, really excited. So there's a lot happening behind the scenes. So I've started to write the script for the series and I've started to try and hire people for the actual, um, you know, we're hoping that we can get it on Netflix and stuff like that once it's all done and dusted and I've got the actors and everything. So That would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. Are you thinking about making like a theater out of it or just a film in the beginning? Or just, first, it's, it's the album, the book, the, the stories yeah. with the music. Yeah. So I think it's going to probably, I think we're probably looking more, I mean, if it turns out to be a theater, then great. But I think for now, we're looking more into film series, that type of thing. Okay. And uh, books and the music. Right. So. Yeah, right. Oh, cool. It does sound it does awesome. Sound I really awesome. can't wait. Karina, I can't wait to hear it. Uh, it's a, it sounds like a big, huge project you have on your hands. But uh, hey, I is there any little title tunes we can listen to to give nipples hard? <laughs> yeah, so you can. So we recently re the, um, uh, released the day after. That's a song uh, which you can hear on Spotify, most downloadable sites, and digital release. And uh, also the self-titled EP, uh, which is Lake of Dreams. So that's available to stream and buy from Amazon and things like that. So okay. iTunes, all that sort of stuff. We've, we've got a hard copy of the CD, Lake of Dreams. And um, so that's the self-titled EP. Uh, that comes with a signed photo and it comes um, as a hard copy. So it's a limited edition. And that's only four pounds ninety nine with postage and packaging. Oh, that's good price. That's really good price. Yeah. So if anyone wants to buy it, um, yeah, they just have to go to www.ragefree.bigcartel.com, and uh, they'll get that, and they'll get they'll get the copy signed as well. They'll get a signed photograph and a signed uh, EP as well. Um, I'm sending that. <laughs> I, I, I want my autograph. <laughs> so repeat, could you repeat the, the website again? Awesome. Well, people, if you're, you're out there, you're watching this, you need to order this because it sounds awesome. I got, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. It, what, what else is coming up for Karina Share? What's going on? Um, so I think we've got my lap as well happening. Um, but we're going to do a Deep Sea Fly EP with her as well. Uh, wait a minute real quick, honey. Uh, something's wrong with the mic. I cannot hear you at all. Can you hear me now? Now I hear you. Now I hear you. Yeah? Okay, so, cool. So, again, what's so, going on? What's going on? So with Mind Lapse, obviously we're writing for that album, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're doing. Uh, Michael and Jimmy will be uh, doing a Facebook Live next week, so we can talk more about that album then. Okay. Um, okay. But there's loads of things I've got my uh, I, I do, isn't there? So I'm writing a um, cookery book as well, and. Uh, yeah, I'm doing sort of like some recipes and stuff like that, and I also do, um, obviously I do Rage Breed, so there's a lot of stuff happening with Rage Breed, as you know, we've got two new uh, shows, so we've got Eric from Misanthropic Records, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's got a show uh, called Sounds of the Underground, we've just affiliated with him, also we've just affiliated the Autopsy Report as well, so... Okay, awesome. Yeah, so, so we're, get, we're getting... What's that about? What's that about? So the autopsy report is kind of like a, um, it's, it's a radio show, um, but, but, but it's, a, you know, obviously bands that are underground and stuff. So both the shows are quite underground based. Um, I think the autopsy report do play a mixture of like, you know, well-known tunes as well. So, oh, cool. I know that, but I think uh, Eric deals with the underground stuff. So it's a yeah. little bit extra there. So yeah. It's really no, that's cool to get the people out a little bit. Get the notarized. So, is, is new band signed. New band signed. Um, so obviously we've got every on the label currently as it stands. There's obviously there's my Lap's Lake of Dreams, Incognito Theory. Uh, we've got Self Imposed Exile, Rough and Rude, and Ancient Sins. So they're the six bands that are on our label. Um, there are bands that want to be on our label. We are getting a lot of. People 
all that want to be in it but I just want to make sure that I don't over over bring in too much too quickly yeah right, I, want yeah, to make right. Sure, I want to make sure that I'm you know having the correct amount of quality time for each band to spend on them you know if that makes sense exactly yeah the quality and quantity time exactly exactly yeah and, and once we get more people and we can then bring on more bands and stuff, um, so at the minute it's, it's not that i don't want to bring them on because there are a lot of bands actually that i'm interested in that i would like yeah. to bring on um but i think for now i think i just want to focus on what we have and then maybe a few months down the line start looking at new signings well, cool. the, 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 the manpower, if that makes sense, you know? Right, right, right. Well, I heard about this one band, uh, Rough and Rude. They're supposed to be pretty badass. <laughs> you are badass. <laughs> no, all the bands you signed, I, I've met, well, we've talked and I heard the music and they all kick ass. They're, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I'm glad to be signed with your company because it's I, I feel so warmed and welcomed. It's it's one big family, and I love it. And tell you what, girl, you are the bad in the business. You know what you're doing, and that's the main thing. And you are very very fair to all the bands. I only hear good things about you, and I can't wait to uh, to hear your. Uh, a lake, uh, of, lake dreams. of dreams. I'm yeah. telling you, I, I, I goosebumps, I, I, nipples are hard, looking for keychains, everything on my nipples now. But I, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so any any planned festivals, Ray, uh, Rage uh, Rage festivals? Uh, yeah, so we've got a Rage Fest, which is going to be a, um, a, it's basically a, uh, it's a festival we do in England, but we are going to be looking at doing that in different countries as well. So because we've got our new group set up, uh, um, you know, a lot of people have been asking from each continent, can we have a Rage Fest there? And um, once I've got um, event managers in each country that I can, you know, build trust with and, you know, we can look at doing something like that there. The, the other good thing is we, we've got Rage Breed Live events and obviously... You guys are coming to England. Ruffin Reed is coming to England. And yeah, I heard you're coming. Too. You're badass. I've got to get tickets yeah. for Ruffin Reed. <laughs> so that's going to be great. That's going to be really cool. So, um, but we've got four shows booked at the Musician next year. Awesome. Um, awesome. So that's going to be sort of like a quarterly thing that we do. And then obviously we'll have Rage Fest as well. So we've got a lot of shows in the pipeline. We'll be doing tours and such. Um, once I've got a few more booking agents in around the well around the world really, um, I am looking for booking agents uh, in each country who who are of quality that could get the job done. Um, exactly. Yeah. You know. Uh, no blah blahs. Yeah, exactly. You know. There's too many of them out there. Out there. Yeah, very true, and uh, we, we need to get people that are uh, you know basically right. full of action, right? We need people who, who are actively going to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that so, so I'm going to be getting a lot more booking agents in. And um, yeah, I mean, the future of what we're doing is great. And the other thing we're going to be doing is a Rage Breed recruitment consultancy. So we'll be doing Rage Breed graphic design services. Um, and we're going to be basically putting up a recruitment agency globally for music business jobs around the world. So oh, cool. Gonna, yeah, so that's that's something new that we're working on. Um, that's a very ambitious project, so that'll take probably a few years. Well, that's, not a few years, but, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. A lot yeah. to set up that. Yeah, um, yeah. But the thing is, it's like, the way I see it is that there's a lot of alternatives out there that have got such great skill sets. Right, and, right. you know, there's a lot of companies out there in music business that want to hire you know and it would be a great opportunity for you know labels and people who have you know got the skill set there to you know get people working in an alternative yeah. environment you know exactly and especially if they're guided by you it will be a very warm fair environment yeah yeah thank you that's lovely because a lot of uh, you, you know how it is a lot of business in the music business 
are cheats. The, the greed uh, has taken over too much of their personality. And, it's, and I've noticed that it's not in you. You are a band with the band. It's one big family, and that's why we respect girl. Thank you. You are calm. Anything going on? I heard with the, what's that, the rage lady? No, what's it called? The ladies of metal? What are you doing? What are you doing there with them? Oh, rage free girls, you mean? Yeah, uh, 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 Fran and her. Savage ladies. I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say anything because I'm <laughs> mad. So, I wa she won't let me become a savage yeah. lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so basically, we, we've got a show coming up actually after this that will be launched on Rage Free Radio. So we've got a show coming up for Savage Ladies of Metal um, after this broadcast. So I'll be putting it all together. Wapping on Podbean, and it will be available to listen to through all the channels. That's the point, actually. I wanted to mention this. Uh, Rage Breed Radio is now available on Spotify, Alexa, Amazon, YouTube, um, Deezer, as well as um, oh, Alexa started talking. That's really funny. Um, and because um, I said Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. She's talking to me now. Oh my god. But um yeah, so so all that and then www.ragebreed.biz forward slash radio. That's where you can hear it as well from our own site and also through the Facebook um That is awesome. That is awesome. And with the other sites, when does that start or has it already started? Yeah, so if you went to www.ragebreed.biz forward slash mm -hmm. radio you will be able to hear um, the, the, the basically all, all the episodes. Same with um, Spotify as well, from episode one up to now. So, badass, badass. Yeah, badass. so it's all there. Uh, so I heard uh, in the hot seat that you have a new TV show coming up. Yeah, so we've got In the Hot Seat, which is going to be absolutely hilarious, which you know about as well. So, um, yeah, we're looking hey. at <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be launching that, um, I believe it's tomorrow actually, isn't it? Um, is it Friday tomorrow? Hang on, let me get the... No, Friday... Yeah, yeah. No, no. no, it's day after tomorrow. Yeah, I, one thing is missing, exactly. I know, the telemarketing thing. I, I, I will get it done. I will get it done. I know, I believe you. But anyway, <laughs> I know, no, I know you have your hands full. You hardly have any elbow room to breathe. I know that. You are, like I said, you're a maniac. I don't know how you survive this stuff. You are all over the place doing everything. But you know what? In your hands, it's safe and it's working. Yeah. So, so. I'm, nipples are hard. I don't know what to say. That's all I can say. If my nipples get hard, then everything is a okay. No, really. And uh, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to uh, do more stuff with Rage Breed. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I'm really, I'm really, really, really happy with with what we're doing, and you know, it's all good. Yeah. It's it's really boomed, hasn't it? I mean, the amount of emails I'm getting. It's just the positive feedback. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful, isn't it? I, I feel I, really I feel good, really you know, and people really ask me, hey, when's the next show coming? The radio show? When can we see Russell Rude and Dave Incognito? You're out there too, Dave. Everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, I love the guy. He's, he's my brother. And no, no, you have good people on, and, and what, I, what I'm trying to say, it's all positive. Yeah, definitely. It, it, there's no negative coming in, except with the uh, song from Ruffle Roo. Uh, it was a negative, it's just some questions about uh, Love You Like Cosby. Oh, yeah, yeah. A few, a few women wrote me, and I explained it to them, because Love You Like Cosby is a song against rape. Yeah. You know, Bill Cosby was num our number one uncle, television uncle in America, growing up with him. And, uh, you know, 
uh, what was it called? Um, uh, Fat Albert. Hey, hey, hey. And then he eats the Jello brand, Jello pudding. Ooh, I'm so cause we eat this. You know, we grew up with him. So what happened? He turned out to be a dirty rapist. And I, I'm against it because a lot of friends of mine uh, were raped. And uh, it's sad. So, but uh, and this one woman, she wrote me, and uh, I'm not going to mention the name, but she was also uh, 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 badly raped, and uh, she's an organization. She wrote me, asked me questions about it, and I explained it to him, uh, to her, and she she asked me, can I post the song? And I said yes, but please put a little brief notice in there what it's really about. And she said yes, yeah, she she will. So it's all positive, you know. We are rough and rude. We are here to help women. I I mean, we need to find an organization for that. Mm, definitely. I mean, we do rage breed against bullying, and we've done exactly. against exactly. domestic violence, and you know, being a rape survivor myself as well. Um, you know, it's it's something that I think people need to be aware of, and you know. It's not so much that we want to bring people down. We just need to highlight the th the issues that are going on in this world, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and make the world a safer place to say this is wrong. Exactly. This is not going to be tolerated, you know. And um, I, I'm a strong believer in uh, self defence. I'm a strong believer in women, you know, um, rising from the ashes from difficult situations. So, right. Right. You know, and and one of the reasons why I set up Rage Breed Against Bullying. Uh, was because there are so many people who have been on the receiving end of domestic abuse, violence, rape, things like that, even cyberbullying, you know, things that you don't think that can draw people to, you know, such a, a big low, you know. Exactly. It's, it's happens, you know. <coughs> they are, see, mostly they're, they're, they're scarred for life. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I like to let the people know we are here for support if we need. Maybe we can guide the finger and say, let's try this or call this or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what we're looking at doing on the Rage Breed Gates bullying side is we're looking at bringing in some uh, uh, voluntary counsellors and voluntary psychotherapists. So I am going to be building that up a little bit more into a charity and um, for alternatives, people who have yeah. suffered you know, at the hands of people who are very malicious, cruel, whether it be physical or emotional, abusive, you know, exactly, and, um, exactly. you know, it's not right. And, and people need to be opening their eyes on that, you know, to see what's right and wrong. And I think we can only just be a positive influence to say, yeah. this is wrong. Yeah. But also, not, not, because the, pa the problem with the internet, the power of the internet is people can talk lies about you and all, all of a sudden people believe it and all of a sudden you can be losing people that you've known for a very long time so th this is a platform to say this is my story this is this is the truth right this right. is what i've come this is what i've right. uh, you know what i believe and stuff and you know we've helped a lot of people um you know tell their story on there so in the magazine issue one if people have read rage Breed magazine issue one uh, we've done a few, you know, uh, LGBT things of there as well. Mm -hmm. We've done a video with uh, Siobhan Maze and Will Price um, regarding bullying in the LGBT scene. So we're trying to we're trying to sort of make people realise that these things do exist. But yeah. What can we do as a society yeah. to become better as people? You know, how do we help each other shine rather than? you know, insult each other and, and bring each other down, you know, yeah. it's it's that kind yeah. of thing. Our mental yeah. health is so important yeah. exactly. and we have to protect it. Exactly. exactly. No, I, I know how it is because going, going through, not elementary, because I was the biggest kid there, I was Papa John. I was taking care of the little guys. As soon as I went to junior high and high school, that's when they started bullying, you know, me, me and, uh, but, it was, hard. it was hard. It was hard. It was hard. But, but yeah. yeah, and I had nobody there. Nobody there. You know, that's yeah, why. That's but we are here for people that kind of need help. Yeah. Uh, 
we can we're not professionals because maybe we can point it to the professional way absolutely and, and and also the other thing that i do offer is life coaching i am actually a qualified life coach so um you know people are having problems with achieving their dreams or they've got certain goals obviously you know i i do do life coaching on there the other thing is we do we, we want to bring in more count, qualified counsellors and psychotherapists so we, we are going to be looking out and reaching out for actual you know people who uh you know uh, got degrees in counselling right. and psychotherapy and i think that that is going to be a really cool thing for our society because i think sometimes people who are not in the alternative scene don't they they find it hard to relate to the mainstream type of thing sometimes and i think it right. will be really helpful to find people who are in the alternative culture and you know are able to have that trust you know yeah. uh, between each yeah. other and stuff so yeah no i found out a couple of weeks ago well a couple of days ago as a matter of fact people are still talking about me so i must be that interesting you know what i mean <laughs> that i'm still in there heart heart mind and mouth so i i'm very interesting i guess they can't get me out of the mind yeah but that's okay but that's okay but you know you know what though before when it first started when i started to go from that point of being sort of somebody who was not as known to someone who has become quite globally well known that transition is so weird because it's like you're not used to people talking about you and they're talking about you like you don't you don't have like a you know like you don't have any feelings right and right. it's and it's like and you're seeing stuff on pages and chats and you're like what the fuck yeah. like yeah why yeah, are yeah exactly in my life like what what and some of the things they're saying you're just cracking up because you're like where the hell did they get that from you know <laughs> <laughs> And you, and you know it's so funny to see it because you're like well you obviously don't know who i am but yeah, you know exactly. this is how rumors can get started so this is why i always say you don't have to fight yeah. every single yeah. battle but things that are seriously wrong um you know you've got to be able to state your case and and, and defend yourself right i mean most of the time if they're like really stupid silly stuff it's just yeah. you know what it's always yeah. a duck yeah that's one thing that always bothered me but you know you have so many haters out there and dude if you get to know me let's go have a drink or cocktail or let's just sit there and talk and shoot the breeze together and then you will know it's not true what you're talking about me it's just the hate and hate is ugly and and that makes a lot of people evil inside and that's sad for i feel sorry for them yeah i i do i i do as well because the thing is it's like the way i see things and i think people who are on your wavelength understand it because i've always been somebody who likes to see other people shine which is why i love to manage teams it's why i do life coaching it's why i love to help bands because yeah. i can see that inner it's like this like inner ball of energy that's all I can describe it and you can see right. shining when right. they're like performing you know they're in the element you know that that's what they're supposed yeah. to do yeah. and you know if I can help people whether it's playing live whether it's putting them on a radio show whether it's you know I feel yeah. like yeah. that is my purpose to, to try and help people like that so so exactly. it's like exactly. and people can make up all these strange ideas about you about what you're you know what you're about and you're just like looking at it going you really have no idea who i am like <laughs> I, I, sat, I sat there i heard stories i'm saying really i did that i did all of that you know it's funny as shit no but like you said some at least being there supporting other bands or my my old ex-guitarist axel burn love you brother he plays in a hardcore speed metal band hey i go just conscious because I wish him well, and I see him, he sees me, because we've been playing years and years, and I see that he looks at me and he's shining, you know? And it makes me feel good to see my buddy up there shining. There's no bad blood. Exactly. And that's yeah. the thing, when you have a heart that can be happy for others, 
Mm. That is the best kind of person that you can meet in your life. Because there's so many people that want to bring you down or they make themselves feel better by putting you down or you know and and it's so nice to meet people who want to cheer each other on yeah. that's what we do in rage yeah. like like dave will say to you oh dude you're so cool and you'll go to dave yeah man your you're, you're stuff's really good and yeah but you know, and, excuse you know, me but dave over he overdoes it sometimes i love the man but you know what <laughs> <laughs> he wants some favors for me <laughs> no i'm kidding oh. <laughs> no, love you, Dave. Love you, Dave. Yeah. I know he's watching. Hey, you know, oh, he will be. I mean, the, the thing is, though, it's like, what's <coughs> nice is if everyone can, can help each other shine, then everyone wins. Yeah. So my philosophy has yeah, always exactly. been rise exactly. together, you know? Exactly. And, 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 exactly. I mean, I remember a few years ago, I, I well, when we still do them, they're Rage Brief VIP cards, and what I did is try and get promoters around the midlands to do discounts for rage Brief card holders and the reason for that was mm -hmm. so if they could get in half price or a couple of quid off it would encourage people to go out uh, you know to these gigs and maybe try two or three rather than just one you know because it just means that you're working collectively as a unit to try and help not just yourself but others as well because I don't want to be in competition with anyone. I want to help everybody else gain business. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. even when I put my club night on, say, for example, uh, we would go to like two or three different places prior, right, you know, right. just to bring in that business. So we'd have a crowd of us going to all these places. We even did interviews in other places so they would get some recognition. And then after the club night, we'd even go to the another place and yeah. sit in there till six o'clock in the morning, you know, or four o'clock, whenever it was, right. and then have an after party. So, you know, um, <laughs> so, you know, we always try to help. And yeah. that has always been my, under, you know, underlying goal for everything, you know. Yeah. Well, the last gig before Corona hit, uh, we op opened up for this one band that called uh, Rolling Bones, really badass bands. Mm -hmm. And like an hour before we, we're on the stage. I took a walk outside, smoked a cigarette, and there were a few kids. They they couldn't get in because they didn't have any money. And so you guys come to watch the show. Oh, God, we would really love to, but you know, kids today. And I said, "You're my guest." So I put them. You know, I, I love that because they're 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 our future. They're uh, going to be our future musicians. You know, and they were and they love the show and. Both shows, we opened up for Rolling Bones and they loved Rolling Bones. And after the show, they came and said, Dude, thank you, bro. You know, it was really nice of you. And they didn't never forget that. And I never forget that. And, and that's what I did mostly before gigs starting. Well, I used to do that back way back in the 80s and 90s. Always walk around for kids who didn't have money to get in. I said, Meet this guy, you know. You know, sure. Sure. We're not going to be millionaires in this business anyway, but we're going to have fun doing it. Damn straight. Fucking A. Yeah. You know, I mean, just see how it goes. I mean, you, you put in the hard work. If it flows, it flows. If you become successful, excellent. You know, yeah. it's a plus, but it has to be the passion driving you. You know, and as long as you've got the passion driving you, then, you know, it's all good. See, and I, as big as I am, I'm a softie. Every time at the end of the gigs, you know, we take our final bow and the people are really cheering because you're on the stage, you're working with the people, you know, and you see their eyes and they're giving you the expression because they're, they're mimicking your face when I'm playing, I'm, I'm making retard faces, okay? <laughs> but, but I look and they're mimicking me and, and after the show, I get the, that powerful hour of feedback. I cry on the stage, but I have to run off the stage, so you don't have to. Uh, yeah. I feel like a little sissy, like but I don't care. That's rock and roll. That's, 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 that's a true feeling of rock and roll. Yeah, definitely. I remember um, some of the best moments that I've had um, live has been probably Rock City. And I remember in 2001, you're talking now, this is, I remember the first Rock City show Mind Laps ever played, and we were in the you know, we were on stage and everything, and everyone was like, encore, encore, you know. And there were people in the room standing on tables to see us. The whole place was packed. 
we have people standing on tables and we're in mosh pit going and um you know it was it was fantastic we offloaded so many cds that night and um but they were like uncom and we played all our songs that we'd already already done yeah we're like, what are we gonna do because we've not so we just played one song again we were just like well let's just play love i hate you know <laughs> and everyone went wild, wild. It was so good. And that is so beautiful. It was, it was wonderful. And then I remember at the end of it, it was so funny because um, it was our first proper paid gig. And we were so happy because, you know, like, we we're like, oh my God. And, you know, like when, because we'd got 4Ks in Kerrang. And so we we're quite buzzing about that anyway. And then obviously, then we started to play like venues like Rock City. And it was right, that right. feeling of real, oh my God, people love what we're doing. And that yeah. energy that you have on stage is just so incredible, that's, isn't it? That, that's beautiful. I know, I, I know. I, 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 right before Corona hit, uh, my two boys, they're 24 and 21 now, but they came to see dad the first time because I quit the music business because I raised my kids on my own. But they were in the, they were in the audience. And this one song is called Twister. Also, I used to sing, play bass and sing. That was weird because I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. But if I start a song correctly, the song I don't forget. But I started Twister wrong, and I didn't know the lyrics anymore. And it was so sweet, my two boys trying to uh, 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 throw me the words, you know, <laughs> lip syncing. But I couldn't see because I had the, uh, uh, the lights in my eyes. But it was so cool. We laughed our ass off, and it's cool. That's all rock and roll. It's a fuck up show, but it's a, it's a beautiful feeling. Getting all that positive feedback back. That's why I'm doing this. You know how you're talking about your eyes when all the smoke's there? I've got a really funny story about this. So, so we played uh, in London and it was a venue called the Red Eye in Camden. And um, what was really funny was, at the last song, they blew loads of smoke into my eyes. And you know like how you have that. And my eyes had an allergic reaction. And um, I started to cry. Now bear in mind, I was really wearing heavy makeup, like Alice Cooper. <laughs> Alice Cooper. Yeah, like, you know, that's what it looked like. Then, like I was literally like, because it really had a big, big allergic reaction. And what happened was, what was really, really funny was our guitarist swung his guitar, and it hit my bass player on the head, and then all of a sudden, his guitar dropped into two pieces on the last song. Now you imagine being in the audience, right, and you see this, and it looked like it was a staged thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, so when we came off stage, all these people, went, oh my god, it was so powerful when you started to cry. They thought I was oh. actually crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was an allergic reaction, and I was like, oh fuck. So I was just like, okay. And then and then they're like, yeah, but the bit when the guitar went in half, that was so cool. Oh my God, that is just like so so badass. And we, we were just like, the stage shows are awesome. awesome. <laughs> and, and and Gaz was like crying. He goes, look what's happened to my guitar, you know. But all these people thought it was like a show. So they're like going, that was amazing. Coming up to us, can we have an autograph? And we right, were just right. crying and laughing. We were like, oh my god. I was like, I'm seeing there, my eyes are simmering because of like I got a large <laughs> reaction with the smoke. And I'm sitting there going, I can't even see anything, let alone sign her autograph. You know? <laughs> so awesome. I, I look like I look like something out of like Alice Cooper. Seriously, my, my eyeliner was all over my face. Everyone th and because I rushed into the bathroom because my eyes were hurting, they right. thought that was really rock star because they were like, oh my god, she's crying, she's upset. Because it was so <laughs> like, no, I've, I've just had a allergic reaction. It was so so funny, but um, yeah. So we were. It was. It was. <laughs> I just remember like, I just remember listening to these people and they were like, it was so cool when you did this lovely thing. If only <laughs> I had no reaction. That's oh, it's so badass. Bad we, 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 we had a gig in the 80s. 
uh, we were called at the time Vibrant Touch, and we were a really cool local band. We played in this concert hall where Tiger Tail was supposed to play that night, but somehow they called called it off, and nobody uh, heard about it that Tiger Tail is not playing. So we we packed the place. Well, we did. Tiger Tails did, but they weren't there that night. So anyway, it was a nice packed concert hall, and I'm, we had these huge uh, uh, stages next to the drums, and it had a ramp going down. And you know, I'm stupid. I'll fall over my own feet. I can't in line, no rollerblading, no skateboarding. I'm I'm glad I can tie my shoe and walk. Anyway, I had these brand new cowboy boots back then. They were in. And the ramp was wood. Well, leather wood, you will slide like a bitch. You know? <laughs> and they didn't put a rubber mat. So I take the first step. Our intro is running. Okay, okay, here we go. This is it. I take the first step. I want to walk down the ramp. You know, really cool. But I slide down the ramp. <laughs> And I'm looking, while I'm sliding, I'm looking at my guitar player, and he's looking at me with big eyes. He knows this big, fat, jolly, big man with the bass is going to box fast. <laughs> but I slid down, like, boom, and I landed perfectly, like it was. The script was written for me, you know? I swear to God, I changed. I changed my slip and everything. I I say that did it. I'm gonna fall, break the base, I'm get my period at the same time. But it was badass. We had a badass show, so it was really cool. So cool, yeah. The people and they didn't even bitch about that Tiger Tails didn't even play. And Tiger Tail was back then a pretty badass band. So, well, honey. Is there anything you want to promote? Uh, just for everyone to go to Rage Breed uh, TV on YouTube, check out obviously the Lake of Dreams CD. And if you oh, I will. Movie, I will. That's so cool. And also, um, Haunted is now by My Lapse is on uh, Spotify. So if you want to check that out, you can do. It's all it's available to buy. So is the album Forgotten Memories of Past Lives. And basically support Rage Breed, join our groups, check out our pages, you know. Yes, uh, please do. Lake of Dreams will be obviously working on material, so we're going to be doing behind the scenes stuff, we're going to be filming stuff, so there's going to be a lot of stuff happening on that front as well. So, um, yeah, all good. So, But next time what we'll do is we'll have a chat with Jimmy as well, but he's not here at the moment, so we can find out a little bit more about his influences. Um, yeah, we'll sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I hope I'm invited. Of course you're invited. <laughs> <laughs> we always have a good time, don't we, sweetie? Damn straight. <laughs> yeah, fucking A. Because it's rock and roll and it's rage breed. Damn straight. <laughs> so, I'm not going to say a word about rough and road. We'll save that for the other time. You can say something about Rough and Rude, go on. Well, Rough and Rude is going into the studio. We're coming out with a new album it's called Road to Thunder. It's, it's a badass. It's going to be really good. It's strictly rock. Yeah. Nibbles are hard again. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. And I cannot wait to be on the billing with rage breed in england because you and i mademoiselle we're going to go out and we're going to get shit face and make the town unsteady do you have a good lawyer <laughs> oh god <laughs> probably we'll need to get one in advance oh we should i get a good friend but now nah, we got to get him out of jail then <laughs> but anyway honey it was great talking to you thank you so much for the interview lovely you are a sweetheart and stay the way you are People in TV radio land, Johnny Chadwick from Rock for Rude, this beautiful woman, Karina Cher from Rage Breed, Lake of Dreams. I can't wait. I can't wait. The fantasy, I, I got, I'm going to have sweet dreams tonight. Cheers, honey. Here's to you. Thank you. We are the
Bye, baby. Bye, baby.